ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم صدق الله عزيم Dear respectable brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another beautiful opportunity that we had this weekend to get together to seek the knowledge of Islam from our scholars, to meet our brothers and sisters, to get strengthening of our iman and rejuvenation of our, our will and determination to continue to struggle as believers obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this brief presentation, i like to share with you three different points. One is the difficult road ahead for Muslims in North America. And second, what is the guidance of Quran and Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these circumstances and third what is the take-home message while we leave from here after this concluding session the purpose after all is not just to seek the knowledge but to shock out our strategy and our course of action when we go home because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judges not just about the knowledge not about what we know what we learn but what is the action plan what are we going to do about the situation so first of all the difficult road ahead alhamdulillah has been outlined by our scholars and we know very well the difficulties and hardships and the trials that the Muslim community in North America has been going through over the last few years and particularly since last year. The statistics tell us that there are more instances of hate crimes against Muslims and there's so much Islamophobia on the rise and I don't need to go into details of that. We see around us in our communities and in the city that we live in and we hear and read about it in the news media and on the social media as well. But what is the teaching of the Quran and the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in this situation? The verse I recited from Surah Hamim Sajda, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَسْتَبِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا the evil and good cannot be equal. But if you do good, then the one who may have animosity, one who may have adversity to you, may become your staunchest friend and ally. My brothers and sisters, this is not just a statement of fact the Quran tells us. But the most beautiful guidance for us, particularly in the situation that we are in today. And I'd like to share with you some of the example from our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his seerah. And then just two or three instances from our situation here in America where you may have also read 
about these examples. These are the inspirational stories which we hear and read about, and they guide us how we should be living and acting as Muslims here in North America. We look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and this story is well known, and probably everybody has read this, but such an inspirational story and very relevant to our situation here in North America. That in Mecca, there was a woman who used to throw trash upon Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he used to walk in front of his, her house or in the, in, the, in the street. So then one day, he did not see the trash thrown at him. So he tries to find out what has happened to that particular lady. And he was told that she was suffering with some illness. So he went there and took care of her, provided her whatever she needed, whether medicine or food, he brought that to her. Just that act of kindness in the face of animosity, see how it worked and changed the heart of that person. She looked at him as a person of kindness and mercy and a person who is there to help and assist her in her need. So that changed her situation. And alhamdulillah, she became Muslima. Similarly, we find the example on the victory of Makkah day when the enemies of Islam were lined up before him and they knew that their fate is sealed and there's no chance that they will survive the death penalty. So the Prophet wasallam asked them, do you know what I'm going to do to you? And they said, you are a kareem, a, a kind person. So he said, I forgive all of you and there is no blame on you. Just go, you're free. And you know that many of them, they became Muslims and the leaders of the Muslims. And now let me share with you a few instances which I read in the news media, on the Facebook and social media. You may have read that, but they're so inspirational. Just about a couple of weeks ago, I read that there was an immigrant Muslim from Bangladesh. I don't have his name. And he was working on a 7-Eleven store. And one person walks in. A white extremist walks in with a gun and points the gun at him. The man said, man, whatever you want, take it. Here is all the money and more. Please don't shoot at me. The man said, I don't care about your money. I don't, I don't want you people here. I'm here to get you. Keep your money, I don't care about. So that showed he came there with full of hatred. So the story goes that he said, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, you saved my life. And then the man shot at him. But the bullet went on one side of the head, injuring his eye. And later on, he lost his eyesight in one eye, but his life was saved. This man was arrested and charged with hate crime with intention to murder. And then he was sentenced to death. He was in his death cell. But this Muslim says, I came to the media and told them I forgive him. I'm a Muslim. My Prophet Sallallahu has taught me mercy and kindness and love and forgive him. And even he went to the court and said, I forgive him. He went all the way to Supreme Court to appeal for his life, but his sentence was not reversed. Before he was sentenced to death, he wrote a letter and even talked to this Muslim. And he said, you are a very kind person. I call you my brother. I was full of hate and I, and I wanted to kill you, but you have proven that your faith teaches you the kindness and love. 
and I respect you. I respect your faith. So this is how, my brothers and sisters, this man who was full of hate, just before his death, he declared that Islam and this faith is nothing but mercy and kindness. Just because of the action of this Muslim showing the kindness to him. Then you may have read another incident. It's about a sister. Very recently, I think, not more than a couple, three weeks ago. She was attacked by a similar person with hatred against Muslims who attacked her and she was even physically hurt and he was arrested. And there was a hate crime charge against him. When she went before the judge, the man was sitting there. And this sister, she requested the judge to allow her to talk to him. And she, the judge gave her permission and she addressed the man. And she said, I know you did this crime against me, but my faith tells me that I should forgive you. And I'm declaring in this court that I forgive you. I have no charge against you. And I request this court to let you go. This is just recently that this example came up. Then another incident I share which inspired me so much. This was a brother in some little town in Texas. He told me that he bought a house in a community in a suburb area where mostly white population and some they did not even know about Islam and had negative information about Islam. So when he moved to his new house with his family, they would come and throw eggs at his house and his door as a show of hatred against him. So he said he would get those eggs and put uh, to, the, to the plant so maybe they'll grow better with this protein which is they are throwing at him. So then one day there was a tornado and a couple of three houses around his house, they were damaged tremendously. There was a lot of flooding, there was a lot of damage. He says, myself and my wife and our children, we all went to these houses with food, clean water, and we removed the debris. This is what changed the heart of these people. And they all came to his house later on, apologizing for what they did. And they said, we did not know that you are such a kind person. So much kindness is in there in you. And he said, this is because of Islam. This is because of the example of my Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then there was a tremendous, you know, warm relationship between these neighbors. Then he told me that they decided to leave that area because he found jobs somewhere else. When they were leaving, their neighbors, they came and they were crying. They were saying, we wish you lived here amongst us. Your leaving from here brings sadness to our heart. There's such a kind person, such a loving person leaving from our community. This is so inspirational. This is actual happening. You know, what all this tells us that the Quran and the example of Rasulullah wasallam is what guides us in these situations. Do not think that Islamophobia and that hatred which is out there is something which is very injurious and hurtful. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa You may dislike something, but it is something good for you. They are doing the work of da'wah ilallah. The word of Islam and Muslim would not have gone that much as it is going through Islamophobia. So after this, the last thing I want to share with you is, now what is our action plan when we leave from this convention? And the action plan, my dear brothers and sisters, is what ICNA has been introducing you to its programs and invites you to join hands with the ICNA's teams to carry out this mission of the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On the one hand, you find the organization 
making efforts to provide Islamic knowledge. We have to have the ilm of Quran and Sunnah. This is not just a weekend exercise. This is a lifelong quest for knowledge and guidance. We have to make it a regular struggle and exercise every day to turn to Quran and the example of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the ICNA provides you that jamaat, that organization, where you join it, and we have structured programs on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, where we try to learn from each other the Quran and Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We provide you the syllabus in order to study with your family and then equip yourself with this beautiful knowledge of Quran and Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With that, then we go out. There is an outreach program of Da'wah ilallah. We are a program like Why Islam and Gain Peace. Alhamdulillah, these programs are very successful throughout North America. Recently, I was looking at some of the activities under Gain Peace in Chicago. They had open masajid program. And I was told that in one masjid, they thought maybe 15, 20, or 50 people will come there. 500 people showed up from the neighborhood and they learned about Quran and Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should open our masajid. We should try to open our homes, invite our neighbors to come and meet with Muslims. And we, you have heard this from scholars, that those who meet the Muslims and they are in the Islamic environment and see that, their prejudice and their misinformation disappears or is lessened than those who have never met a Muslim, who have never been to a masjid. So we invite you to join Why Islam and the Gain Peace Effort for Da'wah ilallah. There are many other programs and the time does not allow me to go into details about that. But at the same time, it is important that we engage in social service. This is the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sahaba that they serve the humanity. And in North America, we have Ikna Relief, which is carrying out this function. All of us, we are affiliated with some masajid. Let us make a goal that every masjid in North America, they should have a food pantry. Alhamdulillah, I live in a very small town in Northwest Florida, where we have a small masjid and a small community. And we have a food pantry. I cannot tell you how much goodwill this food pantry has created amongst all the, our, our fellow Americans who come there. There are 30 to more families who come there every other weekend to get the food. There's so much need to feed the hungry and the homeless in this society, which is supposed to be the richest country in the world. But unfortunately, there is so much hunger there. So let us make a goal that every masjid should have a food pantry, which can be done very easily. And ICNA Relief can guide you about that. Then the free clinics, which we are establishing, the physician like myself and many in this crowd, we can volunteer time to have free clinic once a week or once in two weeks even. And we had such experiences. The people, they appreciate such activities when the health care is so expensive in this country. And many of them cannot afford the health care. If we as Muslims open our pockets and we open and, and come out as professional to support and help our needy fellow Americans, you, can imagine, you cannot imagine the goodwill which it will bring, inshallah. So this is the action plan for all of us when we leave from here. Whatever ability Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, let us become part of this action plan which is going on throughout North America, whether big cities or small cities or towns. It doesn't take a whole lot. But that will be the productive thing that we do wherever we live. To take this message of ICNA and mass and involve ourselves in these activities and be part of it. And particularly involve our youngsters, our young men and women who are growing in our homes. These are the true Americans who are Muslim and at the same time they're born, raised here in this country. They speak 
the, the proper language. They know how to communicate. We need to prepare them, get involved into the organization, into the DAV activities, and the social service. And last but not the least is the social justice effort. There are Muslims, and even the non-Muslims, who suffer injustices, who suffer oppression by individuals and by the, by the state, state organizations and so on. So if we come to their help and assistance, we provide them the guidance, they will be ever our friends and our supporters. So we should stand up for social justice and do all we can to be on their side. My brother and sister, these are some of the points which I like to share with you and remind myself that once we leave now after this session, let us not go home just with the knowledge and appreciation of the opportunity to come here and learn, but at the same time, leave with the de determination that we are going to make our contribution in removing the misconception, misunderstanding in the minds of our fellow Americans. We are going to contribute to bring friendship and love, bring the forgiveness, bring the kindness which was shown by Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his time and his Sahaba, Ridwanullah Alayhi Majma'een. We are going to be embodiment of the same teachings which we have learned here, and then we continue to learn it and propagate it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help and guide us that we learn, continue to learn this knowledge, and he help us to implement it in our lives, and help us to be the, the activist, and not the one who just sit down and listen and observe, and then go on with their lives. قول قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين واستغفر إنه الغفور الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته